Hey folks, welcome to the University of Barbecue. My name is Lars Johnson and today we'll be cooking some beef ribs. So I was able to find a slab of beef dino ribs. I believe this is a almost six pound slab of beef dino ribs. These are the prime uh, graded uh, beef dino ribs. I picked these up at HEB in Burleson about two weeks ago. They've been in the freezer. It took a couple days to thaw them out. And so if you plan on cooking dino ribs that have been uh, frozen, you want to make sure that you give yourself two or three days to thaw those out. You, of course, can thaw them in water, but that's the whole process of putting them in water in every 30 minutes, uh, changing that water. And then after you thaw them that way, you need to cook them immediately. So I thawed these in the fridge over a few days. I'm going to open this pack up. We're going to go ahead and uh, get it trimmed up, cleaned up, and then we'll get it seasoned from there. All right. So now we have all, everything unpackaged. And as you can see, we had a bit of silver skin and some fat on the top here. One of the things that I like to do with beef ribs is... Uh, well, one of the things I don't like to do with beef ribs is over trim. And so a lot of what you see here is probably going to stay. You see different people doing different things with beef ribs. I like to be as lean as possible in terms of taking that fat off. A lot, I've seen people take it off completely. I've seen people leave a lot of it exposed. My preference is to allow there to be just a little bit of fat on the top. So most of this, I'm not going to take it off. So I will show you some of the trimming. I'll probably fast forward through a bit of this, but I'll go ahead and give you an idea of what that trim process looks like. Okay, so here, I'm going to get it down to about eighth of an inch, quarter inch, somewhere in there. Clean up as much as I can. In some places, I'll probably expose some of the meat, which is okay. I just don't want to do too much of that. And that's kind of personal preference there. Really depends on what you like to do. Now, you'll notice here we got a membrane on the back. I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, this helps hold the beef rib together. You don't want your beef rib to fall apart while you're cooking it. So I know a lot of the times people spare ribs, different types of ribs like goat ribs, maybe uh, lamb ribs. Some folks take that membrane off. Um, you typically see that with spare ribs and baby backs. I don't mess with this on beef ribs. I don't really know anyone who does uh, because if you do that, you may end up with boneless beef ribs before the end of the cook. And so I encourage you to leave those on, but again, do what you like to do, uh, do what works best for you. All right. So I think this is really going to be about it. Let's see if I can give me a little piece here. Yeah, this is going to be about it in terms of what I'm going to do with this trim. All right. That's it. And so I'm going to get these cleaned up and then we'll get ready to season. All right, folks, we're ready to start adding the rub to our uh, beef ribs. And so I've got my partner in barbecue right here. This is my oldest son, Lars the second. Say hi to everyone. Hello. All right. So this is my oldest and he's going to help me put the rub onto the beef ribs. This is my own special concoction. I'll put the recipe down below so you can see it in the description. But I mix this together anytime I'm doing beef ribs, doing brisket every now and then uh, when I'm doing something like a steak. I may uh, mix this together as well. You'll see that it's kind of dark. Um, if you are aware of the carnivore line of rubs, I use a very similar process in terms of putting this together. It includes what's called activated charcoal. It's food grade charcoal. I use a very small amount of that and it just gives it this really nice dark color. I think it really enhances the bark. So we're going to start adding this on now. Here's our rub right here just so you can get a really good look at it. So you can see there's a lot of darkness to that. Uh, remember, you always want to keep one hand uh, free for handling meat, the other hand free for adding rub on. So I'm going to be talking to my son, kind of showing him how to do this. He's done it before, but always practicing uh, to make sure we improve the method. All right, kid, so I want you to give me your right hand, you're right handed, right? And we're going to put some of this in your hand. You want to grip it like this. And then we're just going to sprinkle that out like that. So I want you to be about this high, about 18 inches above the meat and just sprinkle. Now you want that as even as possible. Good. Keep going. Don't be afraid. There you go. All right. So one thing that we probably should have done, kiddo, is do the backside first. So we're patting that in.
All right, good job, kiddo. And I'm actually going to take this, kind of move it around in there to get some of that off the table. A really good amount of rub goes a long way for these. Put that on there. All right, so now as you can see, we've got a really nice even coat on here. So these are ready to go onto the smoker. And so I like to cook beef ribs a little higher uh, than I do most things. And so most of the time I'm keeping my beef rib somewhere um, cooking between 250 to 300. I like to land between 250 to 275 in most cases, probably looking at anywhere from a six to nine hour cook. Uh, these were about six pounds. So we'll see how long it takes. We're cooking to temp. We're going to take these into about 205, maybe 208. And there's going to be a whole process with that. I'll probably wrap them as well. And so you'll get to see that as well. Let's get these on the smoker. All right, folks. So I've got these on my 120 gallon offset smoker right in the middle. Uh, I pumped the temperature up a bit. So I boosted it to about 300, 325 degrees. That's because this thing is open. And so it's going to fall down a bit. I am using a Fireboard 2 to monitor the temperatures. And so I stuck that probe, this probe right here. I stuck this probe right here in the thickest part of the meat. The larger, thicker part of the meat, I have that pointed towards the firebox side. The thinner side is on the other side. And then I also have an ambient probe right here to help me monitor. All right, so we have those beef ribs on now. Uh, the temperature's climbing again. As I said, I cranked up the temperature to 300, 325, maybe even 350. Because I knew that I was going to have that open and talk on the camera, I wanted to make sure my firebox was nice and hot so it could recover quickly. I put that uh, temperature probe right there in the fattest part of the meat, that thickest part, pointed that thicker part of the beef ribs toward the fire, like I said. That's really important because the thinner part will cook too fast, and so that end will be, end up being dried out. The other end may be undercooked, or it all may end up drying out just because you cooked it too quickly. And I also had it right in the middle of my smoker. If you know how smokers work, while that heat is rushing in for the firebox, you get kind of this arc. And so it arcs, the heat rises, and then it falls. And so you get this kind of nice lull and that heat storm right there in the middle. And so that's why I'm cooking right there in this uh, middle part of the smoker. I also had an ambient probe right there to give me a good idea of what that temperature is right there by that thickest part of the meat so I can monitor that. And the temperature fall off between the thickest part of the meat and just a few inches forward to that thinner part of the meat. It's not that much. And so you don't really have to worry, oh, well, what's the temperature on the other side of the meat? You're talking maybe 10 inches of difference. And so maybe a couple of degrees is not that big of a deal. But those ambient probes uh, are really great to help you monitor. I also have it connected to my smartwatch. And so it can send me a alert. It sends an alert when my temperature gets too high or if it falls too low. It also sends an alert when I start to approach that desired temp. So it's really great. All right, let's check these ribs out and see how they're doing. I moved this uh, thermometer here because it started to push it out down here. As you see, this meat is really starting to draw in on both sides, more so on this side, that thicker side. So it should be about 170, 180 degrees there. That's what we're seeing here. Be really tender. So these are getting close. They're cooking kind of fast. Not really sure why, but sometimes it ends up happening. I want to take these until 205 to 210, somewhere in there, maybe 208. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap these. They're looking good. All right. So as you can see, I have butcher paper and foil. I like to do this double wrap. It works well for me. In my mind, the paper keeps the ribs or whatever it is that you're wrapping from boiling inside the foil kind of creates this layer between where the moisture, because the moisture escapes outside the paper, it's on the part between the paper and the foil. And I find that most of the bark remains intact. So I'm going to wrap these just like this. And then we're going to take those to 205, 210, somewhere in there. I'm going to pop them back in the smoker. I'm not going to change the temp. We're going to still be cooking around 250, 275. And as you can see, our beef ribs are done. These were probing super tender. Um, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, they can't get any better than this. We had uh, about 208, 210 all the way through. And so that was right on target in terms of where we wanted to be. Barks maintained and so that paper wrap on the inside, the outer wrap with the foil, that worked out exactly how I wanted to work out. So let's cut into these. All right. You're just gonna follow right along the bone. A slight angle there just to maximize the amount of meat. You can see 
This bone here, a lot of pullback, so there's not a lot of meat on that. So I'm gonna force most, most of that meat onto this middle bone here. And I'm just gonna do that by angling. And these are cutting really nicely. So let's take a look at that gigantic bone in the middle. Make sure I get through all that membrane there. I'm gonna go with this side. Look at that. These are beautiful. Nice bark, super juicy. I'm not gonna squeeze it, super juicy. These are great. All right, so we're ready for the taste test. We got my barbecue partner here. Lars, you ready? Yes. Okay, so I want you to, I'm not gonna give you the giant one. You can taste this one right here. So here, two hands, big rip. How is it? Good. Good? Good flavor? Is it tender? Is it juicy? <laughs> all right. Well, that's the official approval. I'm going to eat some in just a moment, too. But uh, thank you all for tuning in. Make sure that you share, like, subscribe, uh, and then get outside. Cook something. You know, my saying is barbecue and mildew. Go outside and cook something. Make memories with the people that you love and care about the most. All right. Take care, folks. My name is Lars Dodson the second. Well, when people meet me, they call me Dreamy, but just call me second. Um... This is my dad's channel, and I tried his ribs. They were really good, so let's take a big old bite. Mm. You can get all the flavor in there. Come, I sit by and rib it out with some of my dad's ribs. Yeah.